This is the Galaxy Fold 3, Samsung's newest version of their smartphone that unfolds into a tablet. And I've been super excited to get my hands on this thing because with this third generation, Samsung added some key new features that really makes this one feel ready for prime time. Inside of the box, we have the Galaxy Fold 3 itself presented here in its unfolded tablet-like state. We'll take a closer look at it in a sec, but real quick, let's finish up with the unboxing. Where, despite the $1,800 price point, all you get in the box is a USB-C cable and a quick start guide. This is obviously the norm nowadays, but I don't know, at $1,800, you just kind of expect something extra. But then again, this isn't just a smartphone, right? Like, it's unfair to say that it's an $1,800 smartphone since it's really two devices in one, with it being a tablet when it's opened up like this, and then with it being more like a normal phone when it's folded up. Although when it's folded, it's definitely chunky. Samsung did manage to make the Fold 3 a little bit thinner and lighter than last year's Fold 2, but there's just no way around it. This is gonna be thicker and heavier than the smartphone you currently have, unless you're already using the Fold 2. So on the right side of the phone, you've got your volume rocker along with a power button that also doubles as a fingerprint scanner. On the back, there's a three camera system with a 12 megapixel wide camera, an ultra wide and a telephoto lens. On the left side, there's the hinge with the Samsung logo that makes all the unfolding possible. At the bottom of the phone, you've got a USB-C port along with a speaker grill. At the top, there's another speaker grill, just like the one on the bottom. So this will probably yield better sound quality than the typical earpiece speakers on most other smartphones. And then finally, on the front, you have the cover screen, which as we'll see in a second, doesn't quite look like a normal smartphone screen with it being much more narrow with a 25 by nine aspect ratio meaning everything on this outer screen is kind of squeezed in horizontally. For some perspective, it's more narrow than the iPhone 12 mini screen, despite being as tall as the iPhone 12 Pro Max's screen. The good news here though, is the cover screen does at least have a 120 Hertz refresh rate. So scrolling through things like Twitter is gonna be buttery smooth. But at least for me, typing a message with this narrow keyboard is just not the best experience. Now, I get why Samsung didn't go with a wider outer screen here. If they made the screen wider, the phone itself would be wider, and with how thick the phone is, it'd be really hard to hold in the hand. But with it narrow, it's actually easier to grip than a normal smartphone, and it has a decent fit in the pocket. But the main draw of this phone isn't the outer screen, right? It's that inner screen. And when you unfold it, it just feels amazing. I mean, having this much space to work with on a smartphone that easily fits in your pocket, it's unlike anything else. Navigating through the UI is more efficient. Browsing the web where you're getting the desktop version of websites with actual tabs that you can switch between is so much better. Watching YouTube videos that take full advantage of this huge screen is awesome. And the gaming experience on this thing is probably second to none. Not only can you really see everything in a game like Call of Duty here, but because of the way the speakers are placed, when you're holding the phone in landscape, your hands aren't blocking the speakers like they do on regular smartphones. So the sound quality is just better as well, whether you're playing a game or watching Netflix. Now, while the experience here is a great one, it's definitely not perfect. Because this is a folding screen and the way it works, there's a crease that runs down the middle of the screen right where it folds. So when you run your finger across that area, you do feel a small little dip. And if you're looking at the screen from an angle or if you're under direct light, you'll definitely notice the crease here. But for the most part, when you're looking at the screen directly in normal usage, you don't really notice it. It's one of those things that you might think will really bother you before you actually use it, like a notch or a camera cutout, but eventually it kind of just fades into the background. Now, speaking of camera cutouts and fading into the background, the inner display here actually has a selfie camera. It's just underneath the screen itself. So when you're looking right at it, yeah, it's pretty easy to spot, but just like the crease, when you're using the phone normally, it just fades into the background. And while it doesn't produce the best looking selfies, I mean, really, you only want to use this for video calls if you have to, you still have the high quality selfie camera on the outer display. So I think it's a cost well worth it because the result is an uninterrupted viewing experience on a screen that's just unlike any other smartphone.
Now, outside of the improved cover screen, the under display camera, along with the typical stuff like the new Snapdragon 888 chipset, the other big new features on the Fold 3 are IPX8 water resistance, which on a phone that folds with all these moving parts is really impressive to have. The aluminum frame is now 10% stronger and it feels really sturdy when you're opening and closing the phone. The sheet on the inside that protects that folding screen is now 80% tougher. Although I will say that we'll have to see how it stands the test of time since our unit already has a tiny little mark on it. And then finally, Samsung added support for the S Pen, although it's a special version of it that you have to buy separately. But so far, I'm really impressed with this phone. It's not a perfect phone by any means, nor is it a perfect tablet, but I don't know, there's just something special about having a screen that's this big anywhere you go that just folds up and fits in your pocket. But of course, at $1,800, it comes at a price.